let's talk about it, um, how to set up Arduino and make a tiny core. So about Arduino, you know that already. So you go to arduino.cc and you can download the version for your own system. You should be able to open up Arduino on your computer. That's that. Um, and in order to be able to use the AT Tiny chips, you will need um, an extension for it. So some of you already know. So some of you try to test your, your boards in your own computer and program them. Um, but for those who still do not, so you should look for Mega Tiny Core. And uh, so it's on GitHub. Uh, it's made by Spence. And uh, it's, uh, it has been evolving quite a lot during the past year. So a year ago, it didn't have the functionality which would allow to use the programmers that we have. Here you should also follow the installation guide. And it's not crazy a lot to do. Um, so, that's, so you need to first copy this um, URL. And then in Arduino IDE, you should go to File Preferences and add this uh, yeah, this package uh, JSON link over here. And the next thing is uh, that you need to go to the Boards Manager and you need to add the Mega Tiny Core uh, board library. So, which you can find over here, tools, is it board, boards manager. So you see, I, I have it already installed, but you should open this one. And then you would enter mega tiny core over here, hit enter. And uh, here you can also see um, all the versions. So if something is not working well with the, with the latest version, you can always roll back to, to the previous version by using this tool. Uh, and yeah, instead of remove, you will see install over here in, in your case, if you haven't uh, installed it yet. And then there's also a manual way. I haven't really tried this yet, but the, in the, the result is that you, you have all these chips available here. And uh, so the board that we made, the hello board, it's the AT Tiny, it uses the AT Tiny 412 chip. And once we're gonna start working with networking and maybe building some more serious things with, with electronics, then we probably gonna, most of you gonna move to the 1614, which has more pins. Uh, then, yeah, all of these new chips, um, so I'm focusing mostly on the, not mostly, but primarily on the, mainly on the, on the new chips. So they have a 20 uh, megahertz internal clock. Uh, so some people say that this internal clock usually is not very, very precise. And if you need really precise timing, then you would use external clock. And uh, when you program your boards, then you, so you would build the board with an external clock, which is much more precise. And then you would need to select the external clock option over here. Then, uh, so these are all settings. This you, yeah, you can leave as default unless you need some special functionality. Then here you would select the programming port. So now, on different systems, this is going to show up a, a bit differently. So on Mac OS. Uh, you will see that uh, after the TTY, there's a dot and then the serial number of the FTDI chip. Uh, and on Windows, you will probably see this as a, as a COM port. So COM0, COM1, and so on. So in the case of Linux, uh, it is, so every, every serial device that is being connected through USB, it appears as uh, USB0, starting from USB0 to one and so on. When you want to use the programmer, uh, that we made, you want to use the UPDI programmer, you should select the serial port and 4.7K by UPDI style programmer. And uh, I have, uh, so with a, with a Hello Echo board, so if you have followed 
yeah, here, here it is. Uh, if you look at the board, pay attention to these two pins over here. Um, so these two pins are going to be configured as the serial. Okay, so you can uh, take this as an example code and you can just paste it directly in here uh, in the Arduino. So for now, I'm just going to delete this part uh, to make it easier to read. And uh, here, what Neil is doing is, is giving us code in order to test the serial connection. So the, the purpose of this is to test whether we can send messages to the board and if the board's going to give us information back. So it's sort of networking, but uh, it makes sense because this is the first part uh, kind of to bridge the gap between the, our computer and the, and the little board, because in the following uh, weeks, we, uh, we will want to actually send messages to the, to the, to the board, to one of, let's say we, we build the main board and then we connect, connect several boards in the network and we want them to work together, but we want them to be controllable by our, by our main computer. So it's sort of important to get it right, to explore the serial uh, link possibilities. Um, and here's gonna be one problem because like with the, with the code that we used for testing a few weeks ago. Um, so this is why I started to talk about the, the pin layout. Um, so this Arduino code is gonna assume the pin layout uh, in the mega tiny core library. So if I go back to mega tiny core library and um, scroll down, so on the, on, on the main page, I scroll down and then go to these supported parts and then click on AT tiny 412. Then we'll see that TX and RX are defined for these pins, so PA6 and PA7. And uh, so these are going to be the main pins, uh, which are going to be used for serial communication by, uh, by Arduino. And then these pins, so PA1 and PA2, these are secondary uh, serial pins. And uh, guess what? Uh, so if you open the original Niels board, then you will see that um, the secondary TX and RX pins are connected to TX and RX. In order to program, um, you need the, uh, the programmer. So this one, uh, yeah, the one that you built in the electronics production week. And, uh, and then you will need also an FTDI cable. So where you, where you connect the hello board. And uh, so if you want to go a step further so that there you can build also your own uh, FTDI board, which is based on the FTDI chip, so which is this one, uh, because like these FTDI cables that we have at the lab, they are crazy expensive. They're like 20 euros a piece almost. Uh, then this you can build uh, for, uh, it's, it's like two euros or three euros. Uh, so of course you need to put your work on top, but, but still, so in parts, this is a, a three euro adapter, which is uh, almost 10 times less than cheaper than the FTDI cable. And if you want to have one for your own to power your own boards, then it's, I really recommend you to make these. In Arduino, one of the things that you need to check is these ports. So it, it matters in, in, what, in which sequence you attach things to your computer. So now I disconnected all the, um, all the serial devices. And in order to make sure which is your programming device, make sure that you connect the UPDI uh, board first. So I'm going to do that. And uh, my computer is just going to assign it to USB zero. So it's quite easy to remember. So in the, in the case of uh, Mac, I think it's the most complicated because there's going to be a serial number. You just should identify which is the one that you connect first. And then uh, so in order to program the board, uh, it needs to be powered up. And there's the second connection, make the FTDI cable connection to the 
the one where the hello board is connected. And now once that's connected, you will have it uh, as in my case is USB one. And for programming, we'll need to select the USB zero. So the first, the first entry that you uh, got connected. Um, so you need to remember which, which was the, the, the USB device that you connected first, and you need to select that. You would uh, connect them together. So using these uh, UPD items. Uh, so yeah, looks like this. So you should connect them together like this. Hit uh, upload uh, on the in the Arduino ID. Uh, first, I need to save it somewhere. And uh, if everything is all right, then you should see this writing flash progress bar. It basically means that uh, the programmer is successfully being able to send bytes to the, the chip. Yeah, and at this point, it's verifying. And since this is the echo code that we downloaded from Prep Academy, so what is expected is that once we select the uh, serial device, um, so the communication is going to happen through the FTDI cable, the, the cable which is used to power up the board. And in order to communicate with it, we need also to select the it as a port in, in Arduino. Once that is done, we can open the serial monitor. And we should set the baud rate to this one. And at this point, we should be able to send letters to the board and uh, it should send us back something but it doesn't happen because yeah i think they so the serial swap uh, actually means that uh, you swap this the primary and secondary serial line uh, what, what this swap means so you see the there is a primary txd and rxd and then in the library, it's also specified which of the pins can be used as secondary. So TXD1 and RXD1. Let's try to comment this out and upload the code once more. So I'm now going to connect the board back to the UPDI programmer. And then um, remember to select back the, the original UPDI line or port. We'll close this one and now try to upload. All right. And now we go to tools port, the other port, serial monitor should be, yeah. So sending a letter in and it responds me with the letter. Uh, but it seems like that the output is a bit gibberish. because after each letter, it adds also a new line. Yeah. So you send in uh, a letter without a new line. And it's going to add it here. Uh, and then, so this would be using the Arduino code in the Arduino serial library. Uh, but the interesting stuff starts when you start to target things uh, with raw C. So let's try to copy this code. And uh, make a new file like this. And uh, so here it's going to be a bit more tricky. So you have to read a bit more careful um, and here, instead of TX or RX, there, there are two variables uh, which one should change in order to make it work. So these are the serial pin out and serial pin in. So serial pin uh, PN um, being um, the RX, the receiving pin, and pin out, uh, yeah, the, the transmitting pin. Uh, but then how do, you, how do you refer to these pins? In order to understand how to refer to these pins, you should uh, go to the mega tiny core. 
and you can find all the mappings uh, in in the actual code. So it's going to be easier to find it here in the repository than find the place on, on your disk where where the actual uh, board uh, definitions are are placed. Uh, so you can go the mega tiny core mega AVR variants, and here is all the abstraction code. Uh, that is there for all the chips that uh, that we are talking about. So for the mega, uh, so the eighty tiny chips that we are using. So. And for each of these types, there's going to be pins, Arduino, age file. So as you see, so if I this is for four twelve, and then so for all of these variants, uh, there's the pins Arduino file. And uh, when you read that file, you will see that there are several definitions that are made that uh, refer to other definitions. So for example, yeah, so this uh, led, uh, so Arduino it makes use of the led built-in variable. So it's being uh, uh, mapped to the pin PA7. Uh, so these are the actual original pins. Um, yeah, so you, if you look here, then yeah, PA1, PA7, PA6. So these are, um, so PA, uh, so P means port and A means which port. And for each port, there are a eight pins. Um, so more about that in the data sheets. And the more pin a chip has, uh, more pins a chip has, the, um, the more of these ports are made available to the outside world. So let's take a look at, uh, for example, 1614. So here you'll see that the PB is being introduced. So there's PA 0 to 7. And then um, for the rest of the pins, there's PB, PB1, PB2, PB3. So four extra pins from the B port. And I think if you are going to go more like 32, 16, so there are 20 pins. So we'll start to see also PC, so there are the C ports. And uh, so this is an interesting thing about, uh, so how you can think about these 8-bit microcontrollers that uh, the pins are basically mapped to bytes in the memory. And uh, that uh, once you write um, a byte, uh, so, it means, so a byte, uh, yeah, the port is specified by a byte. So each of the pins is one bit in that byte. Uh, so here these mappings, here these definitions. So these, um, so what is attempted here is that uh, Spence is trying to map the, all the Arduino relevant definitions to, uh, to the actual pins of the, of the chips. And what do we need in the case of fixing the code of ours, uh, so this raw serial code to make it work, is so we need to replace this pin one and pin two uh, with the actual TX and RX pins that are here, so which are PA6 and PA7. So I'm just going to try these. So pin 6BM and pin 7BM should work. Yeah, we need to select the right programming programming output. Yep, that's done. And now let's go to tools and port and this one. And now it works. <laughs> 